what I like about mathematics is partly it's the challenge of solving problems, but at higher levels of mathematics it's about understanding the, the deep theories, the concepts that have been developed. It's a golden age of mathematics actually. There are so many mathematicians working, developing it. There's always new areas that needing to be understood. It's actually an explosion of development in mathematics. If you are to find solutions, or un understand the solutions properly, you've got to exploit any symmetry you find. And sim so symmetry is really essential part of understanding equations and therefore of algebra. And one of the basic parts of algebra is the study of symmetry. In the field of representation theory of algebras, William Crawley Boovey is an influential pathbreaker. For the last 15 years, the professor has been teaching pure mathematics at the University of Leeds and has played a pioneering role in investigating the connections between representation theory and geometry. Representation theory is also used in theoretical physics. It is, for example, the foundation upon which the existence of quarks was predicted. A lot of algebra, my type of mathematics, representation theory as well, is motivated by and used in theoretical physics. For example, representation theory is part of the building blocks of the standard model in physics. It's applications to theoretical physics, string theory, other bits of theoretical physics that, that's pushing it. And this interaction between mathematics and physics is very fruitful and it really drives a lot of development. And the more complicated the theorem, the more important it is to talk about it. At the university, Crawley Boovey discusses aspects of tame algebras, a field in which he has contributed seminal theories. In mathematics, the concept is chalk and talk. Complicated equations, it might even be difficult to have it in your head, but unless you can write it down, you certainly can't explain it to somebody. Explain things at the blackboard, writing it out, that's the way mathematicians communicate. Representation theory presents the problems of abstract algebra using linear models to make them comprehensible. In doing so, it follows certain rules that are not typical for our usual understanding of calculations. In multiplication, for example, the factors cannot be swapped arbitrarily, as Rubik's Cube demonstrates. Depending on whether you rotate a horizontal or vertical face first, the result is different. From this follows an important operation with regard to representation theory, the conjugation BAB to the power of minus one. What does this mean? Let's assume you want to make move A. By comparison, you first make move B, then A, and then you reverse move B. The results are different. This conjugation is typical for calculations with so-called matrices, tables for solving linear equations. So what does a certain algebra look like in the language of representation theory? The quaternions, for instance, form an algebra to which three extra numbers, i, j and k, are added. This idea, which goes back to William Rowan Hamilton, produced a four-dimensional number system with which rotations in 3D space can be calculated, such as in a flight simulator. Understanding the representations of an algebra is understanding what linear transformations or what matrices you can find that solve these equations. And that's a much harder problem than finding solutions which are real numbers. This is a representation of the quaternions using 4 by 4 matrices. So it's a representation in four-dimensional space. The quaternions are naturally a symmetry of four-dimensional space. A much greater challenge for representation theory is posed by directed graphs, also known as quivers. It is not necessary to solve equations in order to represent these diagrams, but their conjugation is difficult. The most famous are Dinkin diagrams, which occur elsewhere in mathematics, classifying other types of algebras, called Lie algebras, and also the platonic solids. Representations of quivers is my speciality. The quivers for which the representation theory is best behaved are the ADE Dinkin diagrams. The quivers which are not Dinkin diagrams, the representation theory, there's a lot of work still to un understand them. The dream would be to understand the representations of quivers which are not Dinkin or close to Dinkin, so-called wild quivers. In many ways it's considered a hopeless problem, 
But I don't believe it's hopeless at all. I think really one can find ways of understanding those representations, classifying them in some way. Tea time in Leeds, an excellent ritual, not just among mathematicians, and one that William Crawley Booby will take with him to Bielefeld University in 2016. With its strength in mathematics, the university has managed to recruit its very first Alexander von Humboldt professor. Bielefeld has got a great reputation for representations of algebra. They've always had a very strong group there. That's the place to be to find out really what's going on. And so it would be very nice to be there. It'll help me push my own research. I'll have a research group that I can direct. For Bielefeld, it is ideal that Professor Crawley Bovey chooses particularly thorny theoretical questions, always searching for the appropriate symmetry. He has already made important contributions to solving core mathematical challenges, like the Deligne Simpson problem. So there's actually great beauty in the mathematics. And it turns out that so many different parts of mathematics are related to each other. And discovering that and learning more about mathematics and seeing the interrelationships that's a, a very uplifting thing. And if you have hard problems to understand, if you succeed in understanding them, that makes it all worthwhile.